So today we are going to see about a very interesting hero Perseus through the lesson 5 Perseus and the Gorgon which is written by Claire Horsberg. Children, it's actually a story of myth just like uh, Mahabharata and Ramayana. So myth means traditional story. So this is actually a traditional story which is followed in Greek. Okay, that's why it is called Greek mythology. Okay, come let's know about this Greek mythology, the myth of Perseus through this lesson 5. Okay, now here I have presented the brainstorming of this lesson Perseus and the Gorgon where I'm going to introduce the characters before entering into the lesson. So the first character is Zeus, the king of gods and Dany, a beautiful human. And Dany was also the daughter of the king Acrisius. Perseus. Perseus was the son of god Zeus and beautiful human Dany. Perseus was the hero of the story. When Perseus was born, Dany and Perseus were sent to the island of Seraphos where a kind man called Dictus saved them. Dictus was not only the kind man but also the brother of Polydictus who was the cruel and evil ruler of Seraphos. Next, we have the characters like Hermes and Athena who were god and goddess. And then we have grey witches who were three in number and they were strange women who shares one eye among them. And then we have nymphs. Nymphs were the goddess of nature who takes care of the god Hera's garden. And then Andromeda, a young woman tied to a rock in the sea. The very interesting character Medusa who had two sisters who were gargans, monstrous creature and also very frightening creature who had snakes grown on their head. So children, in order to make you to understand the lesson in a better way, I am going to give you an additional information which is not in your lesson. Okay, That is the origin of the hero, how Perseus was born and why Perseus and Danny were sent to the island Seriphos. Children, can you all see the picture displayed in front of you? He was called Acrisius and he was the king of the powerful city called Argos. And he was much worried about that he was not having a son who would take care of his throne after his period of ruling. So this made him to worry a lot because he had only daughter. So he decided to visit the oracle of Delphi in order to know his prophecy. Prophecy means a prediction of what will happen in future. Since he had only one daughter called Tani, a beautiful princess, so he wanted his daughter to spend the whole life trap in the palace in order to protect himself from the prophecy which he heard through the oracle of Delphi. So he decided to put his daughter in the towers of the palace. On hearing the prayer of the princess Dani, the king of God Zeus wanted to meet her. So he decided to meet her in the form of golden ray so that it would be easy for him to enter into the tower of palace. And he blessed her with a son called Perseus. When the king Acrisius came to know about the birth of his grandson, he became furious and decided to throw them in the sea by placing them in the chest. Chest means box children. Hope you understood the birth of Perseus. Now let's enter into the lesson. I want you all to take your English textbook, page number 56. Okay, so I want you all to put your finger as I read. So in the northern skies, if you look up on a clear night, you can see a constellation of stars called Perseus. Children, constellation means a group of stars. The constellation is named after a Greek hero who was half man, half god. His father was a god, Zeus, and his mother was a beautiful human, Tani. When he was a baby, Perseus and his mother were sent away to an island called Seraphos. A kind man called Dictus took them in and looked after them. Dictus' brother, Polydictus, was the king of the island. Polydictus was a cruel and evil tyrant. Tyrant means a ruler. Perseus grew up into a strong young man. He worked hard on the land and was very protective of his mother. Children, when you see up in the sky, you can see a lot of stars. Yes? Yes. So, those stars, they used to form a pattern. Okay? The formation of pattern by stars is actually said as constellation in science. Okay? I hope you understood what is constellation. 
yes constellation means a group of stars they used to form a pattern okay just as how i have given in a picture as you see now so each constellation has its own name likewise in the northern skies when you look up on a clear night you could see a constellation of stars called perseus which was named after a greek hero who was that greek hero children yes it's perseus and why he was called as half man and half god because his father was the god zeus and his mother was a beautiful human dane hope you're clear children so children when perseus was a baby he and his mother uh, were thrown into the sea by placing them in a chest you all know this yes through a small hint which i gave you already yes so when they were thrown into the sea by placing them in a chest they reached a island called seriphos over there a kind man and a fisherman called dictus saved them and he was the one who raised perseus as a strong and brave man okay children moreover dictus was the brother of polydictus who was the cruel ruler of the island called seriphos one day the mean king mean means very bad king One day the mean king saw Perseus's mother and decided that he wanted to marry her. He kept trying to meet Danae, but Perseus did not like or trust the king, so he used his cunning to keep the king away in order to protect his mother. The king became angry because he was used to getting whatever he wanted. How can I get rid of this irritating man? thought Polydictus. He plotted plotted means secret plan. He plotted to send Perseus away. In disgrace, disgrace means loss of respect, so that he would never return to Seriphos. Perseus knew that he had angered Polydictus, so he was surprised to get an invitation to a banquet. Banquet means a special meal for lots of people. Okay, so here Polydictus have arranged a special meal for lots of people. The invitation made it clear that the king expected everyone to bring him a horse as a present. Perseus did not have a horse and he could not afford to buy one. Children, afford means having enough money to pay for. Okay? So what shall I do? He wondered. It would be disrespectful to refuse the invitation, so he would have to go to the banquet without a gift. He hoped that the king would be understanding. When Perseus arrived at the banquet, he realized that the king was not going to let him off everyone was lined up and one by one they gave their gifts to the king so children one day polydictus saw perseus mother and desired to marry her but this was not liked by perseus as he did not trust the king so the king became very angry with perseus and he thought of a plan to get rid of him so that he would never return to seriphos Perseus knew that he had angered Polydictus but then he was surprised to receive an invitation for banquet from the king Polydictus so in that invitation the king Polydictus had stated very clearly that everyone should bring him a horse as a present but Perseus being a poor man could not afford to buy a horse and He also thought that it would be disrespectful if he fails to attend the banquet. So he decided to attend the banquet without any present. But once he reached banquet, he saw that everyone were giving gifts to the king. Children take page number 57. When it came to Perseus' turn, the king spoke loudly, "Ha, Perseus, where have you hidden the horse you have got for me?" The other guests laughed along with the king. One said, "Oh, Perseus, don't you know our customs?" Perseus felt embarrassed. Embarrassed means ashamed. Everyone in the great hall was looking at him. Without thinking about the consequences, he made a rash promise. Rash means act without thinking. King Polydectus, I have no gift for you today, but I promise that I will bring you another gift, whatever you like. just name it and i will bring it so here we can understand that when it was perseus turn everyone laughed at perseus when the king asked him for his gift apart from that one of the guests also questioned him and made him to feel ashamed so perseus felt very bad among everyone in the hall 
who looked at him. So without thinking about anything, Perseus made a promise to Polydictus that he would bring him anything that he wished to have as a gift. The king looked delighted. He knew he could use this opportunity to get rid of Perseus. He said, that is kind Perseus. I know exactly what I want. He smiled menacingly. Menacingly means threateningly. Okay children? So menacingly means threateningly. Which means telling something in such a way to make someone afraid. Bring me the head of Medusa. Everyone gasped. Gasped means catch one's breath with an open mouth. Perseus nodded and bowed. It shall be done, he said confidently. And then he went to his seat at the banquet table. He tried hard to keep his face from showing how worried he felt. The whole kingdom lived in fear of Medusa and her sisters. They were gorgons, monstrous, terrifying creatures who lived in a cave and preyed on anyone who came near them. Instead of hair, they had snakes growing out of their heads. Unlike her sisters, Medusa was mortal and could, in theory, be killed. In reality, no one had ever come close to being able to defeat her. Anyone who looked directly at Medusa's face was instantly turned to stone. How would a young man be able to defeat her? The next day, before he set off, Perseus spoke to his mother. Don't go, she begged him. I must go, said Perseus. It is the only way to be free from Polydictus. Now the king felt very happy of Perseus' promise as that he could use this opportunity to get rid of Perseus from Seraphos. And also he thought that it would be a nice chance for him to separate Perseus from his mother, Dane. Okay, children? It's all because of Perseus' promise, because he promised without thinking. So he ordered Perseus to bring him the head of Medusa. Who ordered? Very good. The king, Polydictus, ordered Perseus to bring him the head of Medusa. On hearing this, everyone present over there in the hall were shocked. Why? Because the whole kingdom knew that Medusa and her sisters were corgans, monsters and terrifying creatures with snakes on their head. Apart from this, whoever sees Medusa's head will turn into stone. But Perseus agreed and said that he will bring Medusa's head as a present for the king Polydectus. The very next day when Perseus set off to bring Medusa's head, his mother begged him not to go. But Perseus proceeded on his way as this is the only way to be free from Polydictus. Danny wished Perseus luck and watched him leave. She prayed to the gods to keep him safe from harm. High up in the sky, the gods were watching. They wanted to help Perseus and appeared in front of him. Zeus gave him a special sword and a helmet that would make him invisible. Hermes lent Perseus a pair of winged sandals so that he could fly. Athena gave him a polished shield. Perseus was grateful. Thank you, he said. I will do my best to be worthy of your gifts. Use your brain as well as your strength, Perseus, warned Athena. You will need a special bag to carry Medusa's head. On hearing the prayers of Perseus' mother, Dane, the gods who were watching from the sky, they decided to help Perseus and they appeared in front of him. The god Zeus gave him a special sword okay, and a helmet that would make him invisible, which means where others can't see our presence. Apart from this, the god Hermes gave Perseus a pair of winged sandals so that he could fly anywhere, whenever he wants. Athena gave him a polished shield. So the god Athena gave him a polished shield, okay. So Perseus was very grateful to them and he thanked them and he also promised them that 
he will do his best for the gifts that he received from them when persius was about to leave athena warned him that he has to use his brain as well as his strength moreover athena told him that he also needs a special bag to carry medusa's head where will i get this bag asked persius go to the northern shore said athena there you will find the ancient grave witches ancient means very old okay make them tell you how to find the nymphs who look after the garden of the goddess hera be cunning as well as brave persius made his way to the northern shore when he came near to the cave of the ancient witches he crouched crouched means hidden behind some large rocks never had he seen such a hideous sight hideous means ugly the witches wore filthy filthy means dirty tattered tattered means old and used a lot grey robes which looked so much like their wrinkled grey skin that it was hard to make out their features persius almost gagged gagged means severe difficulty in breathing as he noticed that they shared one eyeball as the witches moved around the area they passed the eyeball to each other with their claw like wrinkled hands so children what happened after hearing the advice and warnings of athena persius then asked her about a special bag that from where he could get it in turn athena asked him to move to the northern shore in order to find the grey witches because only from them he could find the nymphs that is goddess of nature who looks after the garden of the goddess hera when persius made his way to the northern shore he met the grey witches in the cave who looked with wrinkled face and grey skin with dirty and torn grey robes who were sharing one eyeball among them with their claw like wrinkled hands so children from this we can understand that all the three grey witches cannot see at a time each one can see only when they receive that one single eyeball okay persius crept closer i hear someone coming said one witch her sister grabbed the eye i can't see anything give it to me screech the other one screech means unpleasant high pitched noise just then as the second sister was handling over the eye persius lunged lunged means jumped forward and grabbed grabbed means taken by force grabbed it from her the witches were confused what can you see demanded the first witch who has the eye give it to me croaked the third witch croaked means deep harsh sound you have it you fool hissed the second witch persius spoke loudly i have your eye you can have it back in return for what i need the witches wailed wailed means shout in pain and pleaded pleaded means begged give us back our eye tell us what you want take me to the nymphs of hera demanded persius the witches knew they had no choice they led him to the west and delivered him to hera's garden persius returned their eye to them children his demeans making a sharp sound so here we can see that persius grabbed the eyeball of the grey witches and demanded them to guide him for the way to meet hera's garden in order to meet the nymphs and to get the knapsack from them finally the grey witches accepted his demand and they led him to the west and directed him to the hera's garden in order to get their eyeball back so next we are going to have a very interesting part of the story persius and medusa the nymphs were very happy to help persius they gave him a silver knapsack to safely contain medusa's head 
Pershu set off again, ready to tackle the gorgon. Long before he got to the entrance to the gorgon's cave, Pershu knew he was in the right place. No creatures came near the place, so there was no noise except the sound of his footsteps in the creepy silence. The petrified remains of men in frozen poses of terror were all around him. Pursues crept as quietly as possible through the forest of statues, making his way to the mouth of the cave. He put on his helmet and slowly walked in, using his polished shield as a mirror to find his way through the cave. He came across the sleeping bodies of the gorgons. Pursues almost gasped. Gasped means short, quick breath out of surprise or pain. So. Pursues almost gasped out loud at the reflection in his shield of Medusa's hideous face. He took a slow, deep breath to calm himself, raised his sword, and with one swift blow swift means quick he chopped off the monster's head. Chopped off means cut off. Quickly, without looking at it, he scooped the head into the knapsack and set off. Children, petrified means frozen with fear or changed into stone. Scooped means pick up and move, which means he picked up the head of Medusa and moved the head into the knapsack. So, children, the nymphs were happy to help Perseus, and so they gave him a silver knapsack to carry Medusa's head safely. After receiving the knapsack, Perseus left the place to find out the gorgons. So once he reached the gorgons cave, he knew that he was in the right place through creepy silence and also by seeing the frozen poses of men. Perseus slowly moved through the forest of statues and reached the cave by wearing the helmet which gives the invisible part. Slowly he also took his polished shield in one hand and also a sword in his other hand. On seeing the reflection of Medusa's hideous face in the shield, he raised his sword and chopped her head with one quick blow. Moreover, quickly without looking at her face, he scooped it into the knapsack and left the place. Medusa's sisters had woken up and they ran out of the cave just behind Pursue's. They could not see him, but they could follow the scent of their sister. Scent means smell. And the trial of blood. Although they were quick, once they were out of the cave, they could not follow Perseus because he flew away on his winged sandals and left them far behind. So children, soon after Perseus chopped Medusa's head, Medusa's sisters woke up and they started to chase Perseus. But they could not reach him as he flew away with the help of the winged sandals which was given by the Lord Hermes. Children, next we are going to see about how Perseus met Andromeda, a beautiful princess, and how he saved her from the ferocious sea monster. This was not the end of Perseus' adventure. On the way home, as he flew along the coast, he saw a young woman tied to a rock in the sea. He flew down to free her. No, you must leave me. I am Andromeda and I must be sacrificed to the sea serpent in order to stop him from attacking our people. Perseus admired her bravery but did not want to see her killed. I will fight the monster and save you, he promised. Be careful, brave one, said Andromeda. Children, sacrificed means killed as an offering to the gods. Serpent means a large snake. So that was not the end of Perseus' voyage, children. So as he was moving towards Seraphos Island with Medusa's head, he came across a young beautiful woman called Andromeda who was tied to a rock. So as he saw her, he came down to set her free. But Andromeda told her that she was tied to a rock as a sacrifice to the sea serpent in order to stop him attacking the other people. But Perseus don't want her to be killed as he was admired by her bravery and beauty. And Perseus also told her that he will save her from that monster. On hearing his words, Andromeda asked Perseus to be careful.
The sea serpent was ferocious and fought hard. Perseus flew in and out of its coils and sliced at it with Zeus's sword. The battle lasted a long time until eventually the sea was red with the serpent's blood and it sank to its death beneath the waves. Come with me, said Perseus to Andromeda, and she agreed. So see children, that the sea serpent was very ferocious and it was very difficult for even Perseus to defeat it. You see, even the battle lasted for a long time. But Perseus had the sword of Zeus where he sliced the sea serpent's body. And that was the end. Perseus killed the sea serpent and then he told Andromeda to come with him. Finally, Andromeda accepted to move Seriphos. Children, the very last scene of this story, the return of Perseus. Back in Seriphos, King Polydictus was holding another banquet when Perseus strode. Strode means come inside through the door. I have your gift, he announced. The king laughed disbelievingly. Show me, he commanded. Commanded means ordered. Perseus closed his eyes tightly and pulled Medusa's head from the back. The king and everyone in his court were instantly turned into stone. From then on, Seraphos was ruled by kind Dictus. Dani was happy to see Perseus home safely. And everyone celebrated when Perseus and Andromeda were married. After killing the monsters like Medusa and Sea Serpent, he came to Seraphos' children to keep up his promise with Polydictus. As soon as he came, he knew that Polydictus had arranged another banquet. So he entered the banquet with the gift of Medusa's head. But nobody believed him, including Polydictus, as it was not possible. Because whoever sees Medusa's head would turn into a stone. Moreover, the king Polydictus and everyone laughed at Perseus and asked him to show it. So immediately Perseus closed his eyes and took out Medusa's head from knapsack and showed to them. On seeing Medusa's head, the king Polydictus and the other people who were there in the court, they turned into stone. So finally, Seraphos was ruled by a kind man called Dictus, who was the brother of the king Polydictus. Finally, Dani was also happy to see her son back at home. At last, everyone celebrated when Andromeda and Perseus got married. And that's the end of the story. Okay children, so remember that this story is a Greek mythology. And it was written by Claire Horsberg. Thank you children. Hope you are clear with the lesson. Now it's your work children. You have to read the lesson and you have to underline the difficult words by listening through this video. And you have to mark it down the synonyms. Thank you.